Yo guys, OCP here and welcome back to another video on my channel and today I am on holiday but more importantly Spurs have been very busy lately but because I'm on holiday, what's the thing you do on holiday? Gotta do a house tour. Alright, so this is the setting. You would think in the Lake District the views would be, I mean the house would be quite bad but and like an old cottage but actually not too bad if I say just for a week actually not even that just five days for my family and I'm going off again in here living room my dad's bedroom me and Ollie's bedroom you can't really see open plan kitchen not too bad all nice and white and toilet done and I'm back so first up literally Today, in I think it was a bit after lunch, the Vincent Sanchez announced official by Spurs and Sky Sports, and he signed for Spurs for a club record deal. This guy impressed me. The only time I've proper, properly watched him and watched a full game of him was in the Europa League final against Man U, and he was Ajax's best player. I think the deal is around 40, around 40 million. It could be a little bit more with add-ons in the end because he's young. He's either 20 or 21. He's got great potential. He's from Colombia. We don't have many players from South America, but obviously Poch is, Lamella is. We got rid of Fazio, thank God. And yeah, that's he came from Ajax. Ajax is officially our feeder club now. Club? Club. Ajax is our feeder club now. Like, we've got Jan, Toby. I'm forgetting someone else. Van der Vaart did come from them after he was at Real Madrid. But back on De Vincent Sanchez. De Vincent Sanchez, I... I it's quite a long name, isn't it? It's quite weird. De Vincent, I've never really heard of that before. But that doesn't matter. This guy is huge. Going to be OP on FIFA. He's quick, really quick for a centre-back. Like, he's going to go perfectly for Spurs as the right centre-back when we play three at the back when everyone's fit. It'll be Jan, Toby and De Vincent. Am I calling, going to call him De Vincent or Sanchez? I don't know. But this guy, you, you probably haven't heard of him before. Most of the players Spurs sign... You probably haven't heard of, you, you probably have to Google, but this guy, I'm telling you, is going to be good. If we've paid 40 million, thank God Sissoko isn't our most expensive signing anymore. This guy, Sanchez, is, and I'm 90% I'm he's going to be a great acquisition for us. And Poch, finally, we're the last top seven team to do some proper business and I think we've made a really good one even though it's so much better when you go out and get the business done early but what Spurs haven't done is that we haven't panic buyed like some teams I'm not gonna go in on other teams but yeah I just feel some teams have like maybe because they had a bad season last season and they do have clear weaknesses they have tried to strengthen in key areas but overspent and just gone just gone too silly not being smart about it and it is all about being smart and I'm hoping that he's, Sanchez is going to fit in fine quickly and he'll be good at Wembley because he's quick and yeah he'll just gel into our squad that we are building perfectly without overspending really but moving on now enough of Sanchez even though I'm hyped about him uh, we move on because I didn't do a review a review because I was here for the Newcastle game I watched that in a pub actually and it's weird to think how Spurs is meant to be a small club. We're not anymore. We are getting bigger. But in a pub in the Lake District, there's other Spurs fans in the pub. Like when they go in and you hear cheers, I was like, jeez. But anyway, the Newcastle game, Kyle Walker-Peters, there's already a chance for him. Like who would have thought? I'd only seen him in an under-23s match before that. And obviously I'd seen him on I, I'd seen him in uh, on TV and friendlies, but... I saw him in person for the under 23s match and he was he was okay. He he did look good on the ball and going forward. But for the Newcastle game he had the game of his life. He was man of the match and I he he was just really good, weren't he? Impressive for a youngster and hopefully he will turn out to be pushing Trippier and them two can have a great battle for the right back position and yes, yeah, Spurs were Defensively solid. We know we're, we're not going to concede five to Newcastle anymore. Our defence is solid. And we haven't even spent that much on them. They're just 
just really good. Davis is I used to abuse him when uh, last season, but now he doesn't put a foot wrong. Like I know Rose just is better, but he can definitely replace him, and I don't have a problem with him, him anymore. Trippier we do need back, but Carl Walker Peters for now I guess is a really good replacement, and we do have Dyer. And Sissoko at right wing back, if we really need to, we can move to three at the back. Going forward, in the first half, we wasn't great. Ericsson is just a different level for us at the moment. That goal he scored against PSG and the flick he did over the left back, the Newcastle left back's head, it was just orgasmic. I just feel with all the attention on Kane, Ali and maybe Lloris and probably Toby as well, I just feel that... Ericsson isn't really appreciated enough by the Spurs fans especially like because we've got a predominantly strong team he gets shrugged off quite a lot compared to the other players and I just feel that he doesn't get the praise that he deserves because he is like really high up like I wouldn't I don't know he is world class but he's not like the best in the world in his uh, like camp position but he is definitely up there and he does score a lot of important goals for us and more importantly assists actually both the goals were assisted by him Ali is back on the score sheet Kane could have had so much more he didn't score but he could have had he hit the post and he missed two chances that he usually would take but obviously it's the August curse he'll catch Lukaku even though Man U fans think he's already won the golden boot even though hello Kane has won it two years in a row even though he was injured for three months last season, but I am pretty confident he's going to deliver the goods again and win the Golden Boot again. But more importantly, the Chelsea game on Sunday, I am going with Oli and I cannot wait now because Chelsea lost to Burnley. We just, I know it's at Wembley, I'm not going to use that as an excuse, even though it does clearly by results affect us. But we just need to go in all guns blazing they've got suspensions they've got injuries we've got pretty much everyone fit apart from lamella rose son's back now from his broken arm or hand or something but if we play our best i am really confident we can go six points clear of them and like put chelsea to the sword really so that is it in terms of the game really we just wanyam is back fit son's back fit and we just need to go into games and play our best. We know our defence is solid. It's just against the big games away. That is the concern from last season. And that is where we can improve away from home. Well, that's where we need to improve away from home. It's just uh, the big day at Wembley. We're, Spurs are officially on their way to Wembley as of Sunday. So that is the big game. And then in terms of signings, we've now made a signing that I'm really happy with. There's a fly. But we do need to continue, not stop now, because we've made one good signing. We need to carry on strengthening the key areas. Just a few more signings to give us a bit more depth for the Champions League. And that is pretty much it for now, really. I've got everything off my chest I wanted to say. That's about it for today, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. Hopefully a vlog coming soon. And I'll see you guys next time.